Hi there, I'm Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget on Metro User Interface in Windows Server 2012. What is the Metro User Interface? Well, technically, the user interface part in Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012 is called the Windows Start Screen. And it's definitely controversial, especially how Microsoft has implemented it in Windows Server. Some administrators say, why do I need this Mickey Mouse interface on my server system? But not so fast. This is meant to be a replacement for the traditional start menu that was given to us originally in good old Windows 95. And yes, the Windows Start screen features these great big tiles and it's optimized for touch interfaces, which of course make me think and make you think probably of tablet computing. And again, that seems fine and dandy for Windows 8 as a client OS, but what about Windows Server? Let me jump down to my final bullet point. You never know. Perhaps tablet-based Windows Server administration isn't as far off as one might think. Now, this Metro UI, also called Windows Start Screen, there's a little bit of confusion with the terminology. It's still quite new. Metro is also a design language. It actually refers to an application style. Technically, in the .NET framework world, Microsoft calls it the Windows Runtime Environment. And these Metro-style apps are meant to run full screen and be very immersive and to put content before Chrome. In other words, useful information, typography above graphics. The interesting thing, and you'll see this in our demo, is that that works pretty well in Windows 8. For instance, the weather tile in the Metro UI actually shows the current temperature, whatever that is, for whatever default city you've put in. But in Windows Server 2012, most of the tiles on the start screen take us over to the traditional Windows desktop environment rather than give us a Metro-style app. Granted, this micro nugget is based on Windows Server 2012 release candidate, but historically the release candidate and the release to manufacturer version are one and the same thing, so I'm not exactly sure what Microsoft has in store for us, but let's jump into the demo and I'll show you. When you log into Windows Server 2012, you're not taken to the start screen, you're taken instead to the traditional Windows desktop. This is in contrast to how it works in Windows 8, which does in fact default to the so-called Metro user interface. The -the out-of-the-box experience in Windows Server 2012 release candidate is that Server Manager opens as soon as you get into that desktop environment. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for the old start button that we've come to expect in the lower left corner, don't expect it, because this is actually a link back to the Server Manager utility. If you want to go from the traditional desktop back to the start screen, you'll want to move your mouse cursor to the extreme left corner until you see that little start icon represent. You can then click it to switch over to the Metro style UI. It's a little bit kludgy in my personal opinion, but then again, Microsoft didn't ask me. This is the default collection of tiles, and these are not Metro style applications. Even Internet Explorer, interestingly enough, although it looks like a Windows 8 live tile, if we give it a click, we have Windows Explorer 10 open, of course, but it happens over on the traditional Windows desktop side. Let's come back to the start screen, if we right click on a tile, that's the equivalent of looking at the properties sheet of an icon or a file in traditional windows. We see this banner show up at the bottom of the screen that gives us various options. One thing I've noticed that's kind of interesting here in server 2012 as compared to windows 8 is that we don't have the ability to make these tiles double size like we do in windows 8. That might have to do with the fact that these tiles represent old school Microsoft management consoles and are not as such Metro style apps. But you see we can unpin a tile from the start menu, we can pin or unpin from the taskbar over on the traditional Windows side, we can run as administrator, run as a different user, open a file system location, or if we come over to the right and click all apps, that's going to show all installed applications on the system and give us one click access to them. From the all apps screen, 
We can use finger gestures to swipe to move left and right. Alternatively, we can point our mouse down at the bottom of the screen and scroll using this traditional scroll bar as you see. What else can we do from the start screen? Well, as you see in the upper right corner, we have the currently logged on user. If we click on that tile, we have the ability to lock the computer or sign out. Now, a common question that folks have about this start screen interface, both in Windows Server 2012 as well as Windows 8 is, how do we shut down? How do we restart? How do we get to control panel? All that kind of stuff. Here's the answer to that question. Move your mouse to the lower right corner of the screen and you'll see what's called the charms menu. In the left right corner you'll see the time and date. That's fine. But then you'll also see along the charm strip quick links to the search tool, start menu configuration, or we can go to settings. From settings we can customize start screen behavior, tile behavior, access online help and then here's the quick answer to your question you can click the power button to either shut down or restart the system. The charms menu is also accessible from the traditional Windows desktop. The date and time are normally shown in the lower right area. This notification area hasn't changed from Windows Server 2008, but by hovering your mouse in the lower right corner, again, we get access to the same settings and the same shutdown option there as well. There you have it. Very quick introduction to the desktop environment in Windows Server 2012 release candidate. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.